Hello, this is Dr. Goff Louis, and thanks for joining me again. If you haven't already watched my unboxing of the Wello WX Smart Connected Soldering Platform, you can find the video in the description below. But for those who have watched it, they'll know exactly what this video is about. And thanks once again to Element 14 and Wella for providing this rather generous demonstration kit. So for the past two months, I've been living with the Wella WX Smart as my primary soldering station. And uh, through those two months, I've been doing quite a few different things with it. And uh, through those experiences, I've learned a lot about what the WX Smart is capable of and uh, perhaps, you know, things that I like and things that I find maybe a little bit more problematic. But nevertheless, uh, the two months have passed and now it's time for me to show you exactly what I found. All right, so let's first start with the soldering aspect. For this review, um, we've been provided two hand pieces. I'll first talk about the Weller WX MPS MS, the hand piece that's used for Pico soldering um, through to ordinary soldering. And I think this one, even though it is rated for 12 volt 40 watt, is by far the most versatile hand piece of all of them. And so I really, really like this um, for several reasons. The first is it's got a metal barrel. It just feels nice. The, the size is just right and the, the cable is nice and flexible. Uh, but more than that, you know, with the active tip technology, the tips are easy to change. They just come in cartridges like this and uh, they have a nice soft rubber grip with a short tip to grip distance, which makes precision soldering quite a bit easier. Fitting the tips is as simple as just plugging it in. The um, fact that the ring light is in your peripheral vision and allows you to tell at a glance when the tip is up to temperature or when it's outside the process window simply by flashing is a stroke of genius. The other thing you'll notice is just the speed at which these tips get to temperature. So um, when I turned it on just then, it literally took only a few seconds to go from cold right up to the operating window, which means that if the soldering pencil goes to sleep, it's no longer a major wait for it to come back up to temperature. And that's a great thing for productivity. With such power at your fingertips and such quick responses, you really never think about the iron not being at temperature. It's also good that everything is all remotely shown on the screen so you can have your power graph you can have your presets you can change them you can even change the ring light color if you should so desire that way at a glance you can tell which tool has been installed on what channel so um, a very nifty features to have now when actually using it um, i found that you know amongst the selection of tips i tend to prefer the conical ones myself but i can see why some people might like the chisel ones uh, but nevertheless, I found that the selection of tips is quite extraordinary and it, it generally does a attack almost all the soldering jobs that you might have to hand. So I've been able to do things like through hole soldering, um, constructing several of these kits here. I've done some SMD practices um, and they've turned out fairly well as well. And I've even challenged myself to make my own SMD practice kit. And this is a bit of a clone of the SMD challenge boards that are out there. And so I've even gone down to uh, 01005 size resistors and managed to solder them by hand without a magnifier. And I think that's absolutely brilliant. And no doubt because of the fineness of the tips that are available, um, but also a set of tweezers. These things are just amazing. The tips on these are so well aligned that my components aren't flinging all over the shop. So I think that that is um, another thing, you know, to credit to the success. Now, as it comes to the uh, larger version of this, the Weller WX UPS MS, uh, much the same, you know, it's got that sort of cartridge tip system, but this one's a bit tighter and it's kind of a little bit difficult to pull out. The handle does come apart if you do twist, which is probably not a good idea. But on the whole, it shares very much um, similar characteristics. It heats up very quickly. It's got a nice metal metallic body. It's got memory functions. It's got its ring light. Um, so I really like using this as well. And for heavier duty jobs, this thing, it's a very frustration free experience using these. I really do like them. People say that the mark of a good tool is a tool that kind of gets out of the way and you don't even think about it. And when I'm using the WXMPS and WXUPS, 
I think that's exactly how I feel. Um, I'm focusing on the job, on the workpiece. I'm not thinking anymore about if the iron is up to temperature or not. I'm not thinking if, you know, I need to pause between joints to let the iron recover. Because if anything, you know, the system itself is so well regulated and so capable, it has just not been a problem. Uh, further to that, I've been testing different soldering alloys, including the SAC M1, so SAC 305 type, that Weller has sent along, along with SN100C, um, 99C, as well as 95A, which is amongst one of the more challenging lead-free alloys. And the one which really turned me off lead-free when I first started. And I'm finding using those alloys to be almost as easy as using 6040, using leaded solder. So if anything, having, you know, proper irons that keep the temperature well and, uh, and have good thermal recovery characteristics, good response characteristics, it's really made soldering quite a lot easier and ensured that, you know, we have relatively consistent solder joints, even with the more challenging alloys, which need a little bit more temperature. And in part, um, that is also credited to the WCU. It's pretty easy to use. You just turn it on and you choose which channel to calibrate, put it on the thermocross and off you go. It even transmits the offset data through the RS-232 connection back to the station and that is memorized for the tip. Because one thing that I have noticed is that some tips have offset temperatures of you know up to 29 degrees in some cases. Uh, majority of them less but it does mean that you know without it your tip temperatures may be quite a bit different from what you have set. Also, when uh, clipping those legs, yeah, the, the Weller Aram, you know, 622 ends here, these side cutters, they're pretty sharp and they do the job. Uh, the return spring seems to be, you know, a little bit light on this, so um, probably not quite as quick to open as I would like, but I mean, that's not too bad. When it comes to desoldering the WXDV120, uh, this is a vertical desoldering iron. I found this an absolute joy to use. Um, surprisingly, it sucks and it sucks really well. Um, and I say that in the, the most positive way because it needs to suck. And so with the WX Air, um, what I find is that I was thinking that, you know, if you're holding it vertically and you're desoldering it vertically, that you're probably going to have stuff gunking it up. But no, it's actually, it manages to just suck it all the way into the back of the filter. And uh, I've not had any clogs or jams, even desoldering, you know, 20 year old crusty solder, some lead free stuff and having a mixture of alloys. It just does the job. And depending on the tip you have, I mean, I do like the bullet shaped tips, but I'm starting to grow a little bit more fond of these kind of flat cut tips because they have that wider annular surface area which improves heat transfer to the pad but also means you can get a better seal all the way around and that gives you a slightly better chance of, of sucking out those uh, bits of solder where you've got plated through holes but of course you know there is a downside with the sharper edges there's a chance you might mar a pad or scratch up the solder resist but for the most part it's been quite useful it's uh, managed to help me salvage you know whole sets of uh, seven segment displays and dip chips and whatnot like they've just come out of boards so easily as for the um, wx hap 200 hot air pencil um, as a hot air pencil it's not bad um, you can certainly get your smd smaller footprint stuff done larger chips are a bit of a challenge depending on how you do them um, it's not quite a hot air gun, not quite like the AC Brethren, but it does have you know, a bit of finesse. What I find is that um, controlling the air speed for the WX Air becomes quite a bit important because these tips are more narrow. They have a chance to blow your components off the board. And for that, you do have to use the touchscreen, swipe up to bench controls and head to the WX Air. And unfortunately, that's you know a several step process. As for the user interface, the touchscreen is lovely. It's brilliant. It's nice and bright. It uh, is rather responsive. It's a little bit sensitive to fingerprints and, and dirt on the screen. Sometimes the screen can get a little bit stuck, but you know, the cleaning cloth seems to do the trick at the moment. The other thing is that there is no tactility. So this is the same kind of issue that um, people with modern cars and electric cars may encounter where 
they find that without the tactility, it's just hard to be able to effect changes without taking your eye away from say the workpiece and looking at the LCD screen. So because of that, um, you know, for those who like to do things by feel, this is perhaps a, a little bit of a change that they have to get used to. The firmware itself has been upgraded during the review, which is exciting because it has unlocked new features and there are new paid for features coming as well. Um, well, have been nice enough to give us a license to unlock some of these features and, you know, the ability to, um, to set temperature profile ramp ups for certain um, benchtop accessories. That's quite interesting. The ability to track the amount of power going into each solder joint for training purposes seems exciting, although at the moment the functionality doesn't quite work the way I expect, as well as the ability to, you know, set calibration uh, timers and uh, attach a USB barcode scanner to, say, scan in work recipes, that's all here. So when it comes to connectivity, the WX Smart Base Station is pretty much decked out with Wi-Fi and Ethernet on board and the potential to use one of its two serial ports as well. Now, it is supported by a Windows application which allows you to connect, two-factor authenticate, and be able to see um, the current status of the station, as well as record temperature and power profiles over time. There's also a mobile application which similarly allows for a two-factor authenticated connection, but this time it allows for a full remote screen that looks very similar to what you're seeing on the station itself, as well as remote control. It also supports MQTT over WebSockets protocol for integration with a manufacturing execution system or MES, and that allows for the station to basically push values continuously, and that you know represents the real-time status, as well as receive commands remotely for uh, changing the status of the system. So it's like a the capability to do a full remote control that way. It's quite a versatile and well-connected station. Um, it supports you know connection with a number of different Weller benchtop uh, equipment, including preheaters, um, fume extractors, and so on. So what I have here is just but a selection of what is possible in terms of a WX Smart setup. So over the last two months, I've learned quite a lot about the Weller WX Smart soldering platform. Unfortunately, I can't fit that all into a short video. So you're gonna to have to visit the Element 14 Community Forums road test area and look out for my review of the Weller WX Smart connected soldering platform. From there, you will find links to more detailed blogs and even a little bit of a bonus. You're gonna to have to visit the link in the description to find out. This has been Dr. Goff Louis. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you on the forums. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment and I'll get right back to you.